everyone. Thanks for joining us again on our uh, seminar series here called Running Your Business in Quarantine, a Savaro Guide. We're really excited to have a special guest today and a good friend of ours, uh, Bennett Bauscher from Drift. Uh, you've heard me in previous seminars and for those that know me just from talking and passing just about business and communication and technology, I've talked about AI chatbots and Drift and how that's helped my business, but also other people who use it and how it's really transforming um, businesses across, uh, across the globe. Um, and they're one of the fastest growing um, cloud SaaS companies in the world. Uh, so without uh, further ado, I'm gonna introduce Bennett uh, Bosher. If you, if you don't mind saying hi, uh, Bennett. Calm, thanks for having me. Um, and I think you guys have met Calm on some previous webinar uh, series, but just a little background uh, of me, I got about eight years of sales experience, uh, the last five uh, specifically in digital marketing, working for a few digital marketing companies, uh, Drift, and prior to that, I was at HubSpot for four years. So very familiar with uh, marketing technology tools and it seemed to be pretty popular these days. Now that everyone's living online, we're forced to work from home, we're forced to hang out over Zoom and make Zoom jokes. So. Uh, they become more and more relevant, so Calm thought it'd be pretty timely to have me as a as a guest here. So appreciate you having me. And Calm, I'm wearing a golf hat for you. I know you got the golf balls behind you, so figured it out. Uh, I would keep the theme going. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Knowing the personas. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Bennett is gonna go through. To, here's today. Uh, this week's agenda. What is conversational marketing? What does that really mean? Uh, what are different use cases for, you know, a drift chat bot? What are some tips and tricks around that? Um, and, you know, we're at the end of our webinar series, we're always uh, talking about, you know, what is, what does your business look like where you're pivoting? Um, some bi businesses are definitely pivoting right now. So we, we have a, a rapid response business plan and we're going to end with a Q and a. So uh, Bennett, go ahead, take it away. All right, appreciate it, Calm. So yeah, today we're gonna to talk about conversational marketing. Obviously it's been a, been a buzzword probably for the last two years or so. And I know a lot of you guys are local here in the Massachusetts area. So yeah, Drift, we're a Boston-based company, so you might've heard of us uh, or not, but we'll go through uh, one of our product suites, which is this online chat. Uh, we're gonna talk about how it's changing the way people buy. Um, and then we're gonna talk about how you can actually do it. So we got a free product too as well. I'll give you tips on how to set that up uh, after the call, but uh, we'll dive right in. So how to leverage this tool for now our virtual businesses. So uh, I know a lot of you and even Calm uh, in particular are used to doing some, you know, outside sales. Um, even, you know, I know that you guys um, meet. Uh, is it weekly Calm that you guys do the what's what's it called I'm, I'm trying to help me with the word here yeah. but uh the local seminars that you guys host out in uh i think it's worcester well for the webinar series we do weekly and um when we were doing the seminars in person we would do them probably quarterly okay <laughs> so yeah the quarterly you know seminars in person um so he's had obviously to adapt to the way that you know he's interacted with you you know moving this to virtual I also know that he does, you know, meetings and lunches with clients. So you know, how can we change to the new norm that we're going to experience for the next, you know, foreseeable future, uh, unfortunately. So there's a few different scenarios where you'll be able to leverage uh, this chat bot on your site. Um, a couple bullets and we'll, we'll talk about a few today, but one, qualify the different prospects that come to your site. Uh, provide customer service. You know, people might have questions. You could have customers that are looking for a quick response. How can we engage with them, especially if your phone lines are pretty busy that people are calling in uh, pretty frequently? Uh, education information. You know, there could be a lot of content on websites. How can we guide people to that information faster and just provide a better user experience whenever you come to a website? Sometimes it can be pretty overwhelming. Uh, routing people to sales. Hey, someone's looking to buy something. How can we involve sales immediately? Uh, maybe they just have a frequently asked question where we don't want them talking to our support team. How can we route them to a FAQ or frequently asked question area to help uh, deflect some of those tier one questions? Uh, we can engage them at their peak state. So whenever they have you know, their highest intent, 
you know, is when they're on your website. So how do we engage with them live before we lose them? You know, they talk to a competitor or they lose interest. Uh, how can we act as this as a lead generation tool? So how can we, um, you know, create more leads through the funnel by engaging with people on your site? Uh, better user experience, uh, again, more back to that tour guiding, routing people to the right information, but just answering their questions faster. Uh, and how can we book more virtual appointments? You know, at the end of the day, that's what uh, we're doing these days. Uh, how can we do that, whether it's more on the sales or service side of the house? Uh, but before we get started, um, have any of you or like your sales reps have used a chat before? If you guys can just like, Put in uh, the chat pane. I think Laura and Com are fielding that, but I uh, just put like yes or or no. This is completely new. Um, it'll help me with a uh, with a little context. Here. Okay, it looks like some people have used it before. Uh, this is new to a lot of people. Maybe Patrick, if uh, you don't mind just kind of chiming in about your experience using it, um, the things you liked, maybe the things you didn't like, and maybe your business too, and, and that'll help. Uh, that'll help. Yeah, we touched on it gently at my business. I, I own an insurance agency in Westboro, and uh, we tried to use chats for uh, answering frequently asked questions, but it was, uh, it was early on in the chatbot existence, and they were clunky. And that was, that's my biggest hang up on them is they were very, very clunky. They felt robotic. They um, responded instantaneously with long text. So it, it kind of removed the idea that this might be a person talking to you. But uh, I know that they've come a long way, which is why I really want to bring them back. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate the context there. And yeah, chat's been around, you know, at least 20 years. Uh, it's definitely not new. But some of the more traditional chats um, act very similar to a form where they're like, hey, what's your first name? What's your last name? What's your email? And we'll get back to you. Um, or you mentioned it, it can be a little clunky or, or broken at times. So uh, they definitely adapted a lot. And I think what you know we try to do and what we're pioneers on and that whole conversational marketing term is how can we make it more of a human experience? How do we actually have a conversation with people on the website? Um, and make it more real. So that's something that we definitely try to do. And we want um, all your companies are different. Obviously, you're in the insurance space. So you want to, you know, reflect your brand. And that's something, you know, the InThink agency is great as making sure that um, your brand and is adding, uh, you know, your company. So that's something you want to do. And, and the more on this, your brand, um, the more human so obviously all of you are in different industries. So you might have like the InThink, obviously their creative agency, you might have more of like a, a uh, you know, fun, play bot experience while insurance, you know, it's a little bit more, um, you know, serious. So you might have something that is a little less playful just because it reflects, um, you know, the business that you're in. So you wanted to say boring, talk. didn't you? you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fact that you guys are using chat. I mean, I've talked to a lot of insurance companies where um, a lot of them are on the traditional, you know, side of the house where a lot of it is field sales. Um, but now obviously you need to adjust uh, and bring things more, more in-house and online. So um, you're definitely not alone. There's some other traditional, um, at least uh, lines of business like manufacturing is one that I've been talking to. Uh, Stanley Black and Decker is a, a client of ours. They're obviously massive. They have a big B2B arm. They had about uh, 350 sales reps across North America that were all in the field that they had to bring in house. Uh, so this was a deck I ran through with them just because they're picking up drift and they have to adapt their styles. Uh, and very similar, you know, insurance is, you know, typically sitting down over, you know, uh, a meal or, or meeting in person, uh, especially on um, uh, the B2B side of the house. So how can you adapt to uh, to the new times? So I definitely appreciate you just giving us a little context there. And it seems a little new to people, so, uh, which is great. We'll definitely, um, you know, go over the basics. Com, is there anything else, uh, any, anyone else have experience or should we just... Uh, dive into it. Uh, we'll dive into it. We'll take some time maybe in between. We might as no, I'll try to get people um, some questions because we want to make sure like the takeaway here, guys, is like you can apply and understand how this works and say, oh, I can see how I can use this now for 
sales, marketing, operations, information, or support. Um, that's the goal for you guys to take away here. Yeah, feel free to ask questions or chime in in the chat pane. Um, like I said, we're a conversational marketing company, so we try to be as conversational as possible. Uh, so definitely don't be shy. Uh, but there are some use cases in the main use case uh, for using Drift. Kyle mentioned there's a few, but it's definitely to drive more leads and more sales and connect your sales team with leads on the site in real time. So this is super timely, again, that everyone is online today. So how can we make sure that they have that best experience? Uh, because we don't want to miss out on them when they leave the site. Um, and people have more information now than ever. Uh, people do their due diligence, they do their research before they talk to you, you're already vetted. Uh, whether they look you guys up on uh, you know, Yelp, Google reviews, there's a lot of different ways they do that. So when the time they're on your website, they don't need as much education that you think, they're already very bottom of the funnel. Um, you know, for example, you know, I was buying a car recently, you know, I was already probably narrowed down to like the two types of cars I wanted. I just wanted to go in and test drive two of them. I wasn't going into a car dealership being like, hey, you know, show me what you have to offer. Like I already did that due diligence online because I already have that information. So uh, that's just one experience, but you, know, you can relate that across different industries. Uh, we also want to beat our competition, you know, back to that dealership, you know, that's by the time people do finally speak to you, there's probably one or, um, or two different competitors that they're looking at. So the more timely and responsive you can be, that's a better buyer experience you're providing. Uh, him or her, and the more likely you're going to win that business. So, um, again, you know, today's buyers have more information now than ever. People are doing their due diligence before they talk to you. I'm sure all of you have uh, used different reviews in the past. Uh, and here are a couple uh, examples. And, you know, why does response time matter? Like, oh, we, I can always follow up with them tomorrow. Um, there's actually a 10x decrease in odds you actually make contact with a lead uh, after the first five minutes. So, you need to get people in the moment when they're on your website and be as timely as possible. I think my example I always use is I used to work at HubSpot before Drift and people would fill out a form to request a demo. Uh, and then I would start that chase where I would try to email that person. I would try to call them. Uh, I would try any different way to get in contact with them. But if I didn't respond to that demo request immediately, I was never heard back from that person or I'd finally booked that demo a week or two weeks down the road. And by then they're already evaluating, you know, two or three different competitors if I actually do finally book that meeting. So how can we have that conversation in real time before they look at a competitor or before they lose interest? Uh, I can't see any face on the screen, but people are always multitasking. You know, this day and age, like typically I have about uh, 40 different Chrome tabs open. If I showed you guys my uh, my desktop uh, saver, you guys would be very alarmed. There's about 150 different pictures on it of different images that I typically pull up. Uh, and I also have like a million different bookmarks. So people are always very, um, I like to call it the goldfish economy where attention spans are um, you know, more limited now than ever. So being able to catch people in the moment uh, is massive. No pun intended with the, with the goldfish reference there. Uh, but this is how we all communicate today. I always use an example of my bus commute going into work, um, but obviously I'm not doing that now. Uh, but this is what it looks like. You know, people are, you know, heads down. Um, they're messaging friends, family. They're doing work messages, whether that's over Slack or Gchat. Uh, and it's very, you know, conversational. You know, people are using uh, slang. They're using abbreviations. It's informal. People are always responsive. You know, I had people even you know, texting me, you know, last night, that's pretty common just for uh, a quick response, even if it is work-related, uh, and people expect things immediately. Uh, we live in that now uh, movement. And just a few examples of companies that, at least the consumer side of the house, that provide that now experience, which is why they're so popular. Like, you're in a pinch, you need to order something, you know, you're short on toilet paper, you know, you're going to Amazon, you know, hopefully it's on your doorstep the next day. Um, or any other different you know, pinches or use cases, that's gonna be your go-to for something immediate. Uh, if you wanna watch something, you know, Netflix, um, you know, it's right at your fingertips, you get recommended shows, movies. Uh, if you're looking at different you know, house prices, you need to get somewhere where you know, Uber, uh, Lyft, whatever is faster, cheaper, you're gonna go with. Uh, but unfortunately, when you go to most B2B websites today and a lot of B2C websites, you're not getting that same you know, VIP treatment 
um, or anything to respond to your now request, uh, unfortunately. So um, I'll stop quick. Uh, any questions in the chat pane? I saw a couple bubbles come up uh, before I, I go into an example. It was one from Patrick. He asked if you can use this in Facebook Messenger or on your Facebook page. Yeah, so this is more on the website, less on the Messenger. So you can pull in messages you get on Facebook Messenger into your Drift application, but you're not gonna have a Drift bot like deploy on maybe your Facebook page or your LinkedIn page. Uh, this is more on your actual .com website. Oh, Laura just put something in there. Um, Facebook, Facebook Messenger bot, the link from the Drift blog. Uh, Cool. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, yeah, you can pull messages from there into your Drift application. So you'll get messages not just from the ones on your website, but also the ones that you get from um, your Facebook Messenger, and you'll be able to, to view both. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to respond through Drift to those. So uh, this is just one live example of how Drift is utilized on our website. Um, so I think this was mid-flow because I, I circled back, but We'll restart here, but you're actually able to see that we can actually integrate with your calendar. So this is super powerful, especially for me. I sell globally. So I have people out in the EMEA region, so Europe, as well as APAC. So people out in uh, Australia and sometimes Asia. Uh, and I'm not working around the clock. Um, so uh, this is where I actually can leverage the bot to book appointments for me for when those people out in those different regions or visiting our website, asking different questions, and trying to book time. So uh, this is really powerful. You know, obviously I sell international, but even if you guys are selling uh, locally or if you're on Zoom calls all day, you're not gonna be able to respond to every single person that's on your website. So we can actually integrate this with your Outlook or Google Calendar so people can book time for when you're free. Um, so this is super powerful if people are doing research off hours and you guys are, you know, unplugging for the weekend, or if you are, again, busy on a different meeting, we can actually have the bot do the qualification and book that appointment. Bennett, I have someone on asked a question, um, can the booking tool work with a calendar system such as like time trade, like a different calendar tool? Yeah, you can definitely set it up with like a Calendly and just embed that link um, or the other one that you reference. But if you're already on like an Outlook or Gmail, we can, you know, really simply um, block off the different hours when you're free and integrate it with your calendar. So I work with a bunch of customers who were using like a Calendly and this comes, you know, free out of the box with Drift. So they'll just cancel that subscription and use that. But if you're really married to that specific calendar tool, can actually embed that in this drop flow. You won't have as smooth of a click through in terms of the times, but people can still book you there if you prefer that. It's a good question. Yeah, I definitely love uh, the booking feature uh, because I'm not great with time zones. So me being able just to send that out to someone and have them easily find a time uh, is massive. So yeah, I just wanna show you guys what that experience would look like, at least from your end, when someone's chatting in on the site. So great, we saw the interface when someone's on your website, we saw that bot experience. Uh, it's you know different personalized message, it's asking different qualification questions and everything's editable. So you can change that and if you ever need support uh, on that, you know the InThink team is definitely uh, their Drift certified partner and they can help in that front. Uh, but what does it look like, at least from the user experience? Um, so you get a simple notification on your phone. We have an app. Uh, it's very similar to just using messaging. So uh, I have mine unmuted. You can have a sound if you want, but it pops up on my screen. I can easily slide this open and be like, hey, who am I chatting with? You know, how can I help you? Uh, you know, let me know if, uh, if you want to talk now, if you're free. If not, hey, I look forward to the time you booked. So you can t jump into any conversation that you're having, and then you'll also get notified via... Um, desktop. So we have an easy Chrome extension. We're able to see the different conversations that are happening on your website. You can decide if you want to reply, chime in, or you can just have the bot do the different qualification for you. So uh, I always recommend jumping in if you can. You're going to have a higher likelihood to book that appointment. Uh, but again, if you're busy, you can just have the bot do the work. 
for those of you thinking, okay, like this sounds great. What are the results like? I can only speak to what we've done with bots for our clients. And we see about 60% plus conversion because you're, you have someone engaged at the moment of peak interest uh, and they're booking an appointment. So they're already booking an appointment. The chances of them going to someone else to kind of like reach out for that product or service or get more information is, is probably slim because you already acknowledged them and you took the next steps. So um, that that's the big difference between these types of what Drift does compared to some other businesses. Yeah, on average, we see at least a, you know, on the low end, a 2% increase in conversions on your site. So most companies in the B2B space convert maybe at like 1% to 2%. Adding a personalized bot to that, you're looking at around 4% now. So you're going to see a lift there. And then the more engaging, like if you can dive into a conversation, we see even a higher spike uh, as well. So I'll go through a couple numbers on that. Uh, we do have a lot of great uh, success stories, but essentially think of this as another net on your website. Like literally everyone is online today. So your website needs to be your online trade booth. Like you need to be um, proactively engaging with people that come to your site. I always give the example, like, say if you go to, you know, it's like you have the Mona Lisa trade booths. It's the prettiest trade booth out there, um, but there's no one really standing at the front. They just have a form there where you can, you know, write your name, write your email, and someone will get back to you in a week or two. Okay, is that like a booth that you're going to, you know, go to and put your name down? Or if someone's more proactive, shaking hands, giving out swag, interacting with you, you know, you're more likely going to stop and say hi to that person. So, uh, that's what we want the website to do is be a little bit more on that proactive side um, because you can have the prettiest website in the world, but if there aren't different conversion paths, you know, it's like having that Mona Lisa out in the middle of the desert. You want to make sure that it's um, as proactive and sticky as possible, uh, essentially acting as that uh, spider web on your website. Sorry if I gave away uh, too many analogies there, but um, just again, showing like what it looks like on the interface. So once you do start a conversation, this is what it looks like. It's very simple. It's sim similar to if any of you guys have used Slack or Gchat. Uh, it's just simple, um, you know, or even AIM back in the day. It's uh, it's a messaging platform. So you can add different emojis. You can be conversational about it. You can see all your different conversations on the left that you're having with people. So you see the conversation, you dive into it, and it'll auto-populate information on the company. So depending on how long they're on the website, you're going to be able to see you know, where they might be chiming in from, different information about the company, size. We can sync it with either your Salesforce CRM, HubSpot CRM. Uh, we integrate with a few others as well. Or if you don't have a CRM, no problem. We'll just upload a specific lead list of people that you capture emails from. Uh, so you know to follow up with them. Yeah, very uh, simple interface. Try to make it as easy and uh, user adaptive uh, as possible. And then this is a messaging link um, that I was talking about. So similar to like a, a Calendly, uh, it's essentially your online business card. So you're able to Pull in your specific name, your title, location. You can give people an option to chat with you if you want or to schedule a meeting. And you can add a little blurb. So um, now that we're all inside, we're not really giving out, you know, business cards, but at least you can have an online business card that you can send people. Be like, hey, here's, you know, my information. Let me know if you want to book time and chat. And then Com already alluded to some stats here, but our chat leads convert to opportunities at 30%. Um, so that's just internal here at Drift, and that's 3x higher than any other lead source. So um, that's not dr even just Drift. We also work with uh, Adobe, who owns uh, Marketo, as well as Magento. So a couple really big email platforms. We're actually their number one uh, lead source. So I know that they hate to admit it because they sell email marketing campaigns, uh, but we actually drive more pipeline for them through the bot than they do on their own email campaigns. So uh, it's a super powerful tool when used effectively, and I'm going to go through a couple tips and tricks on how to maximize and engage and capture more people when they're on their site through chat. Uh, but before I do that, are there any questions on anything I went through so far or just questions in general? 
and then I know um, we already talked about maybe like the insurance use case, but if it's helpful, if people maybe just want to type in like what vertical uh, they're in or what industry they're in, I could even. And we have a, we have a lawyer. Uh, okay. We have someone who's working with senior services, um, a nonprofit, investment and finance, human services, accounting and bookkeeping. Cool. Cool. Across the board. So, yeah, again, like you can use these in different uh, scenarios. So, like, at least a nonprofit side of the house, like you can obviously, you're looking for more donations. Um, so you can use it on the sales side in terms of the donations, but also you can use it as more of the, the tour guide or make it a little bit more informational for people. Obviously you're, you're probably less selling people. You want to educate them on what the purpose is behind your mission. So I would definitely have the bot geared more towards, hey, how can we provide more, you know, information, um, provide examples of people that really benefit it from the, the profit too as well. So I think that that's how I'd leverage that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm curious, like, um, I mean, at least in the legal and finance side of the house, you know, typically, um, you know, a lot of those are, you know, in-person meetings or uh, at least phone conversations. So uh, being able to leverage the bot to um, being able to, one, you know, book people if, if you guys are, are um, one, trying to land new business where Pete, you're not going to be able to have uh, those conversations. So people coming to the site want more information. How can I book that first appointment? And then those that you are actively working with, like being able to send out a meeting link, blocking off specific time with them to have uh, conversations uh, can also be powerful. I can especially think in like the legal space, like, you know, someone might be in a, a pinch and they need an immediate response. Um, that's where you're able to have that bot conversation before, you know, they look and talk to a competitor. So being very timely there, I think can be super powerful. And then on the finance side of the house, like they definitely want a trusted advisor. Um, so being able to really be responsive to that person, because they probably windled you down to, again, probably that two to three competitor. Um, we're being able to have a personalized conversation with them, answer questions when they have it, especially, you know, today where the market's been a little bit crazy, it's been up and down of late. Uh, so being able to, you know, cater, answer that, those immediate questions that they might have, because obviously your phones might be ringing a little bit more, they might want to engage with you via chat, uh, can be pretty powerful. So I think that's how I leverage it for those, you know, three different industries are all a little bit different. Um, but the chat tool can be very powerful uh, for all three. Going back to just the, the legal side, because we have a client who's, um, who uses the bot for the, the, for the lawyer. And of course, like the goal is to get them to come in, book an appointment, and traditionally use the phone call, because sometimes people start asking questions right away, and you're not trying to give them that consultation over the chat. So you can, you can really um, control that conversation based on what options you give them of like, Oh, what are you here for? And you can list like the types of services. Is it personal injury? Is it divorce, estate planning? Uh, great. Uh, or like, oh, I'm here to talk to this lawyer. So you can funnel that conversation wherever, because if there's a lot of it's more customer service, you can use that bot to not, you know, bog down the other attorneys because it could take that information. Great. Someone will be back, you know, to you or, or you can answer questions that if you can commonly ask questions, this is across all industries too. I know we have, uh, I think senior service, uh, um, uh, human services here too. There's a, probably a lot of uh, ways that you can leverage the bot from a com communication and customer service and FAQ standpoint to point them in the right direction quickly uh, while having to put a person on the phone. If, if that's a goal, if that's, if, that, if that's gonna help free time for you. Um, yeah, I'm thinking even on like, um, again, like the insurance side, you might be working with some people like in the B2B space. Maybe you want to route that to someone who works more on the company level. When it's an individual, maybe you want to route that to someone who specializes with individuals. So how can we route that? That would be like probably the first qualification question you might ask. And then same thing on the, you know, the legal side of the house, um, you know, depending if it's, you know, a, is, a, is a personal in, in injury or if there's like a hierarchy of different cases that your firm takes, 
Um, you can route that to the specific person that either special, specializes in those different cases, um, or if it's gonna be a longer conversation, like Tom said, you don't wanna be giving away you know, free legal advice, how can we get them on the phone quicker? So you can have different um, at least qualifications or routing uh, within the bot uh, to make sure that they get the information uh, that they want. Then you can also use it for like, you know, the human services, people probably ask the same questions. How can I route that to a specific FAQ? So your team's not spending time answering the same questions over and over. Then I also remember you mentioned Senior Living Com, um, where there's a lot of different personas probably coming to the site. There's probably a lot of different offerings and packages that you have for those homes. Um, so being able to guide people to the right information that they're looking for whether that's from an individual standpoint or if you're looking for someone else, uh, I think that could also be really powerful because at least from my experience, there's a lot of different offerings. There's a lot of different levels on senior homes, depending on the current state that that person's in. So I'll be able to answer those questions or at least guide them to those specific questions. So again, uh, the service team is not answering kind of those, those same questions that are frequently asked. Let me dive into a few best practices uh, within chat. So uh, we talked about the different use cases and how it can be powerful. We talked about different industries that you can uh, apply it to. All right, now how do we make it actually effective? Um, so the main one is uh, respond as soon as possible. You know, if you're free, nothing's worse than someone, you know, typing into a chat, hey, is, you know, human there? Uh, and then it's like, yeah, I can, you know, help you or, you know, there's no response or they say, I, I can help you, and then there's a lag in response. Again, this goes back to that now piece uh, and people's attention spans. Let's be as responsive as possible if we're there. Uh, be real and be authentic, you know, be a person. Uh, we don't wanna have that experience where, you know, you sound like a robot. Um, so you can even, uh, depending on the type of, you know, firm or business you're in, you know, you can even be uh, a little cheeky about it. Be like, hey, are you, you know, stuck working at home too? or something like that. Um, just being as real and authentic as possible. I think even people have used like in our chats, like, hey, are you, in, uh, are you on your couch too? Just different things that are modern. If you know people are chatting, if you're only like a local business, you know, you can talk about, um, you know, whatever interests you. People obviously use weather as a crutch often. Uh, obviously it's crummy out today. Just be as real uh, and as personal as possible. Uh, always do a, a good give get. So, um, you know, this obviously, um, I think it goes back with that, you know, legal example where you know, people might ask, you know, a pretty, you know, long question, make sure you get something in return, be like, hey, you know, I'm happy to give you at least one tip uh, on this, but do you mind send me your email for us to book, you know, additional time? Um, or if people maybe came to like, you know, the InThink, you know, site and they're asking about, hey, you know, with COVID going on, what do you recommend for digital strategy? Be like, hey, you know, we've noticed a lot of things going virtual. You should probably double down into your digital efforts. Um, happy to give you a few more tips and tricks. Like we got a great resource here, uh, but do you mind if, uh, you know, I get your email or would you be open to taking a, an appointment? So definitely be able to give helpful information, uh, but you don't want to overgive and you always want to get something in return, whether that's, you know, a phone number, a name, uh, an email, or a next step with them. Uh, I definitely recommend that give get approach. Uh, and if you're free, and you have time, you know, ask for a meeting now. Uh, we have uh, actually a chat to call feature where um, it's like, hey, do you want to, you know, talk right now? And if they type in their number, you can literally call right within the platform and you're having a conversation, or you can even pull up a Zoom uh, immediately. So let's get them in the moment, again, when they have their highest intent before they lose interest because time kills all deals. How can we engage with them live? I definitely recommend doing that if you're free. Uh, and the follow-up, you know, let's drive some leads back to chat. Say we didn't, you know, weren't able to book that meeting now, but we got some of their information, we got their email, like let's follow up with them. You know, let's drive them back to the website. Like we don't need to drive them to a specific contact us page or landing page. We can just drive them back to the website because when they're back there, we can engage and chat with them in live time. So how can we get them back? Um, yeah, and this is a good one. Yeah, just help each other. If you get some good tips and tricks, like we share amongst the team, like the best practices, like I think our main opener is, hey, human here, human there. 
uh, just to let them know like, hey, a human is actually talking to you. Uh, and that's gonna make people a little bit more responsive. So we always share best practices that we've seen work. Uh, we definitely recommend the same amongst your team. Like, hey, what's working? This opener is working really well. Um, I'm been getting more engagement, you know, referencing, you know, X, Y, and Z. Uh, just share best and also worst practices amongst the team. If you see like a major drop off or people, you might be asking for a meeting immediately without providing any value, uh, figure out what's working, what's not for your business uh, and share that amongst the team. So I think I got a couple scenarios here uh, just to walk through what is, you know, works well and what, you know, uh, doesn't as much. And I think I referenced a few of these, but this one is uh, is a little bit of a word vomit from uh, from my colleague Dan, where um, he was going into a big sequence of events or people that have benefited from using our software, um, and that can just be a little overwhelming for people. It's like when someone sends an email and they ask five different questions in that email. I usually star that and I don't get back to it for like another week. But if you just ask one or two small questions and provide a little value in that email, you're gonna get a much better response rate. So make sure that you don't, you know, word vomit, um, send someone, you know, a massive paragraph, uh, they could get a little overwhelmed. Uh, and then immediately asking for that meeting, make sure you provide um, a quick tip, um, be a little bit more playful. Hey, you know, why did you come to the site? What exactly are you looking for? How can we be as helpful as possible? So definitely ask a few more questions, be naturally curious. Uh, and that's going to definitely enhance uh, the conversation you're having. Uh, more likely you're gonna be able to book an appointment. Uh, be real and authentic. Uh, this is Eve on our team. Um, yeah, she's super uh, cheeky, uh, she's witty, um, and she just is, is a real human where she you know, provides you know, smiley faces, she acts um, not like that robot, where, and this makes people a lot more at ease. Um, obviously she uses some abbreviations, uh, she's not doing perfect punctuation and periods. I'd rather have people be as timely and as responsive than as perfect as, as possible. So um, she does a great job at just, you know, being engaging, being funny. You can see on the timestamps too, she's being super timely. So as opposed to crafting that perfect paragraph, perfect punctua punctuation, let's just have a conversation like it's a text uh, exchange. Uh, and definitely again, ask for this meeting now. I know I talked about this, um, but if people ask, hey, are you free now? Like do it. Uh, if you have time, definitely do it because there's a reason they're on their site. People want these quick responses. It goes back to like the whole Amazon example, Uber, Netflix, like people want to engage or use that service in a live time. Let's do the same uh, when they're on our website. Uh, so if you're free, and then the worst case scenario, you can do a quick, you know, Zoom call like this. And then if you don't have a ton of time, at least you made that personal connection and then you can book that following meeting as opposed to being like, you know, hey, um, now it doesn't work. Uh, you know, I only have a half hour. Uh, maybe let's talk in like, you know, a week or two. Being able just to have that quick connect, that quick personal connection, answer their question, and then book that meeting, uh, I highly recommend that. Okay, we got a couple other examples. What makes this a good conversation? How could they improve it? Again, this is pretty similar to Dan's where, you know, they're answering questions that shares a little too much. And after, you know, sharing that, they ask for, for a meeting immediately. So um, that's like asking someone to, I think the example's like, you know, uh, marrying you before the first dance. Um, definitely want to slow dance a little bit before you ask them on the date and, you know, eventually ask to propose down the road. Uh, another analogy for me, but you might just want to answer the question, be like, hey, you know, that's an awesome question. You know, why are you looking into it? Um, how do you think, you know, Drift could help your tech startup? Um, what features are you looking into as opposed to just going for the kill immediately? You know, how can we potentially nurture this a little bit? We're going to get a much higher hit rate from there. Uh, another example, cool. 
So again, you know, Stacy's very timely. She jumps in right when someone's on the site, which is really powerful. She's friendly. And she books the appointment with the AD. It's very high level conversation. Again, just basic stuff. Um, but I got a few other examples too. Um, I know we're, we're coming up on uh, my section here. I definitely want to answer some Q and A's. So I'll send these in the deck after, if you want to look at a few more examples, that makes a good conversation. Um, but any questions on, you know, best chat practices, I have a couple of uh, samples too, but again, I can send that in the deck after or com cam, but want to leave at least, you know, five to 10 minutes to answer anything drift related before we uh, shift over to uh, the com section. Feel free to either chat or unmute yourself. Even applications too, like what I love about this is like in an email uh, or if you send, um, information like even video you haven't really talked about video a little bit bennett like the power of like we talked about loom in previous uh webinars and you know you drift has a video component that's very similar to loom and you can actually chat with someone watching video so engaging with someone if you send them an email they're actually looking at you know if it's a proposal or if it's information or if it's something important or if it's a policy um being being right there at a point of engagement yeah, I know video is a big rage and I don't want to touch upon it too much because I know you did a section on it last week, but we also have a, a, another free feature drift video uh, that I can send a link to sign up for, but you can send a specific video to someone and have a chat response on it. So whenever someone opens that video, you can live time chat. Hey, what do you think of the video? Happy to answer any questions you might have. So we actually embed chat with our videos. So I use that a lot. Like I'll send a sample uh, like a demo similar to this, where I do a demo on their site, show them what Drift would look like. And then on the right, there would be a chat section for that person to either ask questions, comment on, or I can proactively chat in with that person. So uh, extremely powerful. I use that both uh, pre-sales if I'm trying to book a meeting, and I also use it like post-sales as well. Like, hey, um, you know, here's a quote that I, um, that I sent you. Here's a walkthrough. Let me know if you have any different questions on the quote just more of that personalized experience. So I got a couple other you know, tips and tricks on best video practices as well. But um, again, it's just having that live time response in the moment. And that's going to, again, help on the engagement, which down the road obviously helps on conversion. One question here we see uh, Dan asks, is, is there assistant in developing the map of the conversation, like mind mapping? that um, playbook. Yep, absolutely. So we actually have a couple templates that come out of the box. So we have um, like what we call a tour guide or homepage bot, which will help guide people um, to the right information they're looking for. Uh, we have one that's like more bottom of the funnel, like a pricing page, like, hey, let's talk numbers. Uh, we also have a second net bot where you can put on any contact us or form page, like, hey, do you want to skip the form and talk now? So we have a couple out of the box. It's pretty intuitive to build out the different tree and workflow. Uh, but again, if, if you don't have a marketing team or someone who does content or copywriting, uh, that's where I recommend using a partner like InThink to help you with the build out, the strategy. I think, yeah, Com and their team, they have a half a dozen or so clients that are using Drift now. So they've done the implementation a few times. They can help you with the different build out, the flow and what that looks like. So uh, we do have a couple out of the box, but Again, if you're really trying to echo your brand and company, like that's where you can leverage uh, their team with uh, the build out and set up. Uh, Patrick asks, can you embed the chat in an outbound email? Yeah, so you can't have a chat in an email. Uh, what I would do is uh, embed your website or a specific page you're trying to guide them to in that email so then when they do click on that embedded link in the email then they're on your website and you can have that conversation so um that's how i would do it or what i would do is send a video in that email and then if they click on that video within the email same thing as embedding your website then you know when they're watching the video and you can proactively have that conversation with them so we can't directly embed in an email but if you embed it, either your website or a video then you can have uh, a live conversation 
Great. Yeah, let's check out some of these samples that you have here, um, Bennett. Yeah, this is one that uh, Uberflip uses. So they're another marketing technology company. But again, this is relevant. A ton of people have this where, you know, obviously maybe like Saturday or Sunday, like you want to unplug and um, you know, play with the kids. I'm, I'm sure you, <laughs> people might be sick of the Rugrats these days, but uh, just having something that's like, hey, we're out of the office, but we'll definitely get in touch with you when you're back in. Let us try to help answer any questions you might have in the meantime. So it's having someone there 24 by 7, 365, because a lot of time people can't do research like during working hours or busy or they do it during lunch or off hours or on the weekends. So it's recognizing you're out of the office, but then you can book an appointment when you're back in the office. Um, this is that second net bot that I referenced where it's like, you know, hey, you know, if you see a 10 form fill, you might get a little intimidated. You might not want to fill that out. You could be busy. So you can ask them, hey, do you want to skip the form and talk to sales now? So just having a bot that gives them the you know, HOV lane to book an appointment or expedite that can be really powerful. So this is how Wistia leverages it. They got a little mascot as their bot. They got a dog. You know, Everyone loves dogs interacting, playing with dogs. So uh, it's pretty playful based off their brand and it helps them book more appointments. So uh, this is really powerful for any landing pages with forms. And then if you're you know, doing any paid ads, driving people to a specific landing page with a form, uh, I definitely recommend having a bot on there as essentially paid ad insurance. Cool, so this is a good uh, one for nurturing. Again, this is, I, I think I referenced them earlier, Adobe uh, Marketo. So they leverage a bot. There's a ton of different content on their website. They're looking at email marketing, so they have a relevant bot based on email marketing, so depending on the page that they're looking at. As you see, you know, they're not immediately asking for a meeting, they're providing a hyperlink for them. So they're just providing them more information. They're, you know, uh, they're not immediately asking, hey, do you want to talk to sales now? They just want to read more content. Let us at least provide the content for them. Uh, we can do some pretty cool stuff um, with reverse IP lookup. So um, if you guys have any, you know, target accounts or a hit list of people you're going after, you can actually see when those companies are on your website. We can pull that through reverse IP, uh, which obviously works a little bit more powerful when people are in offices, but we can still pull it based on VPN. So we still have a pretty good hit rate. Uh, we can actually greet those companies by name. So very powerful if you're prospecting a target account list. Uh, we got some reverse IP built in. And then there's always that constant debate, you know, hey, do we gate content? Do we ungate it? What are your thoughts there? Um, the good point is you can actually you know, somewhat do both. We can ungate your content, share it with people, but have a bot interact with people on the right. So this is very similar to what the video layout looks like, except you'd have a video on the left. Uh, this is a premium piece of content. And then you can have a chatbot on the right for people to engage. Hey, you know, do you want to download maybe the PDF version to share with your team? Um, so this is a great way to share the content, get people interested, and then um, get the engagement on the right. For example, if you guys are providing like a checklist or, you know, a lot of business have like a go-to piece of collateral, a piece of uh, content that they're either educating or um, using as a guide. So here's where you can, if you see that someone's actually uh, engaging with that piece of content, then you can have a chat or you can just, you can track how well that piece of content or your marketing efforts are doing. So there's a lot of uh, ways to leverage uh, the bot for that. Well, I think that's it, at least in terms of samples. Any uh, final questions for me? Uh, drift, chat strategy, Boston sports that aren't <laughs> happening. Yeah, just actually local here in, in, in Boston. So we're very lucky to have uh, Ben and their company here right in our backyard in Massachusetts for an international company. Yeah, if uh, we got offices in San Francisco, Tampa, 
Um, we're supposed to open one in London. I think that's getting pushed back a bit, but if anyone's ever in the Back Bay area, we're right by the Hancock Tower. So happy to have people in the office. Uh, I know Com's been there, uh, but it's, it's a pretty cool setup and we always have a bunch of swag and books. So uh, if you're ever in the Back Bay area, definitely don't hesitate to reach out and then also have uh, on Com's follow-up email, places to sign up for Drift Free, uh, as well as Drift Video. And then my email, if you guys have any questions, happy to help you guys. Uh, with any setup or answer any you know, questions that I wasn't able to get here. Right. Cool. All right, guys. Well, um, we're just going to wrap up here. With, thank you, Bennett. That was very informative. Hopefully, you guys got some good takeaways there. Um, if ideas or questions come up after the fact, definitely feel free to reach out to myself or Bennett, um, and we can be happy to kind of give you like how does how does something like this work with your you know your scenario, your business, and your de and your departments. Uh, I see Dan's on, she said, I'm on the site. What is the free sign up on the site drift? Bennett. Yeah, it should just be on our uh, homepage. If you go drift.com on the top right, it said get drift free. So if you want to just uh, click that CTA and then it'll just ask you for your email and then you can get live chat on your site. So you might not get the different bot flows on the free, but at least you can get a chat to answer people's questions. You can decide when you wanna have an online and offline bot. So just drift.com, I can put it in the chat and then the top right, uh, we'll make sure this is in the follow-up email, but if you guys wanna start playing with it now, um, that's the best spot to get, uh, get squared away. Then is the, is the Chrome extension for the Drift video, is that free? I think there's a free I version. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I can double check, but. Uh, I thought that, yeah, was, I mean, it's pretty new and it's, it's really useful because it, it's similar to, to Loom. So if you guys go to Chrome and just type in like Drift video Chrome extension, um, you'll see it and then it pops up right there on your browser in the, in the corner. So you can start recording like your screen and yourself and it creates a link on, to see how that works. And, it, and I'm pretty sure it's free. Um, all right, so we're gonna uh, just quickly transition to the rapid response business plan. So like, okay, so how would Drift or chat or any of these type of like tools, you know, align with your business now today, if you're thinking about like, what are you doing for a, a business marketing plan? Um, because a, a, a lot of companies are pivoting. Um, so really what we're doing for a lot of clients here, we're, we're providing 30 minutes for free ourselves or, or even our team members, our strategists. You know, we're trying to help out and give out. You've seen a lot of businesses giving out things for free. And we know that our knowledge and our strategy is what we can bring as value to a lot of our clients who are kind of figuring out what do I do now? What's next? You know, we're, we just transitioned to Zoom and I got my team remotely. Like now what am I doing? So, you know, please, please, please reach out to us. If you guys have any questions, we don't want you guys trying to figure this out yourself. We're providing 30 minutes for free consultation, something that's valued easy between, easily between three or $400 of our time. Um, so you know, tap into that. And I'm happy to even go over for, for those that have been going to the webinar as a free gift to you, but share it with your friends or family. Um, what's in next? And if someone is looking to do the response plan, it takes about two weeks. Normally our regular growth plan for this takes eight, eight to 10 weeks, we condensed it because we know how important it is to, to, to get this done quickly so businesses can start executing on uh, marketing and sales and customer success plans. Uh, so what, what folks get out of this is really a full discovery. What's going on? What's the messaging look like for you now? What are, what are the values that your business brings now? What does your customer look like? What are your competitors doing? You know, then it comes down to strat content strategy. So a lot of folks are asking us, social media, what are we doing for social media? What type of content do we put out there? Um, you know, and, and the outcome of this is you get a two month plan um, to really understand like, what does that roadmap look you know, going into the two months? So any questions about, about what that is, if, if you guys are, cares about what that, that is, I can answer that now, um, or you can reach out to myself or my team members after the fact. Okay, great. So I th yeah, I think that's it guys. So uh, look forward to next week. We are, 
we have so many people that this is so many topics to go over. So uh, we'll be announcing that in a few different days. Uh, we did, we have, uh, unemployment folks. We have folks in the finance and SBA informational. I know that's a big top, top subject today, especially today um, with that protection plan that came out. Um, we're going to be talking to some business coaches and you know, insurance, etc. cetera. So you know, more to come. If you have any suggestions or anything that are top of mind that you need to know over the next two weeks, please email us or message right now in the chat uh, what type of topics that you like. And um, we'll make sure that we're putting a webinar that's for you. So we want to make sure the content, we appreciate all the time and attention and every minute of your day is very precious. So we, I definitely value the time you guys uh, took today and looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Right. Have a good weekend. Bye.